I'm here now with Tom Sanders, head of the Diabetes and Nutritional Sciences Division at King's College London. Wonderful to have you with us today, Tom. Let's talk first about nutrition. How great is the role uh, of nutrition in the onset of type 2 diabetes? Well, it's mainly driven by how, uh, body, how much fat you've got, particularly the fat around the middle. And uh, if you're overweight, you have quite a big increase but if you're obese then a much greater risk so it's really hugely important in causing uh, diabetes so as people are getting fatter we're starting to see that diabetes is following on the trail of the increase in fatness however of people who are at risk of diabetes it also a certain amount depends on what happened in your early life so if you were born small uh, you're more at risk, three times more li likely to get diabetes as, as an adult uh, than if you're born uh, normal weight. And it, it's made worse, obviously, if you put on, get unhealthy weight gain in adult life. So for people who have diabetes, if they were to change what they were putting into their mouths, would that impact positively? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people can just be controlled with diet and exercise without drugs, but normally people are always given the standard dietary advice, take exercise and given a, a simple drug like metformin. And that controls a lot of people. If you uh, think about it, what you, the key thing you need to do is actually keep your weight down. You don't have to get down to desirable body weight is as skinny as anything but even just losing you know four or five kilograms makes quite a big difference people are overweight and you know regular exercise it doesn't have to be going to the gym um, but it's little things like walking upstairs uh, rather than taking the escalator um, doing about half an hour brisk walking a day helps control blood sugar very well how aware are people of this that, that nutrition really plays such a large role in diabetes. What can we do to educate them further? I, I think that people have got to realise if their waist is expanding and, you know, that's going to put them at risk of, of diabetes. Now, the average age at which people get diagnosed with diabetes is quite often in the late 50s in Caucasian population, but in ethnic groups it tends to be 10 years younger, so we see it much younger in South Asians, but we also see much higher rates in uh, indigenous people. Uh, our Aborigines have often diabetes in the 30s or 40s. So being aware that you know your expansion of your waist is is putting you at risk. So you know if your trousers are getting tighter, think about cutting back on how much you're eating. And it's not eating special foods; it's just eating a little bit less. Um, and the real downfall, I think, is also what we call our obesogenic environment. Uh, and that is, there is food available all the time, snacking, bigger portions, and quite often you go and buy food, you're offered, so you buy a cup of coffee, and they say, what else would you like with it? Try to avoid, you know, having those extra little snackettes. Don't give in. Don't give in. <laughs> it requires willpower, and willpower is really difficult. Uh, we know that, you know, all diets work, people eat less, but it's keeping to a steady eating pattern and actually having a steady meal pattern is really important. You know, skipping meals in the morning, going without breakfast is really bad news. So it's better to eat you know, small but often. Tom, wonderful to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.